Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this is video tips number 491 entitled Converting a Delta Saw to a Metal Cutting Saw Using a Variable Frequency Drive. Now, you've watched the three previous ones where I have uh, converted the saw into metal cutting by uh, three other methods, uh, most of which were a failure. And the latest one, if you watched the last one, was with a DC motor. There's the controller, there's the motor. But in this one, I intend to convert it using a variable frequency drive. And there it is. And many people have been saying, why didn't you do that? Well, this was my intention to do this. I just didn't get around to it yet. And it's been three or four months since I made the last video. So a lot has happened since then. So let's get started. Do you know what? After making the last video, my neighbor came over, and he lives 100 feet away, and he says, you know, don't you remember that I have a Delta wood slash metal cutting saw? So I went over to the garage, his garage, and uh, there it is. And you can see from right here, metal wood, and my brother had one of these, although this is a newer one here. He very much dislikes it for metal cutting. He said it's bordering on the worthless for metal cutting. It's a wonderful wood cutting saw. And I have told you that my brother said that 45 years ago. But uh, this neighbor is going to let me into his garage. And I will make a video with that coming up in the future. So watch for that. The Delta saws that are convertible have a gearbox. There is the oil filler. And then on the back of it. That panel that I told you about once, and there's the uh, the system for changing belts, and uh, you pull or push on that uh, shaft there to convert it. Also watch for a video coming up. This is a 14-inch Powermatic wood cutting saw that Matt Krug of Lost Creek Machinery is giving me. I do not have it yet. It's not in good condition, but I am going to convert that over also so that we can talk about it. So there are several videos still coming up. This is the motor and controller, the VFD, that I'm going to use. And this I already had, but Palmer Moynihan gave me the motor, or traded me, I forgot which. It's a one-horse, three-phase Leeson motor with a 5 h shaft. He wired it for me so it's ready to go. This is the controller that I had on a drill press at one time. So I think I'll have plenty of power with a one horse motor and all of the characteristics I want with this. So we're going to see how that works on the the bandsaw. Now several of you mentioned uh, various things and let me go over those. First of all that you said that my belts are 40 or 50 years old, they're hardened, uh, they're, they're just ancient, I should throw them all away, I need to get soft, supple belts that will grip, and you know, I'm sure there's a lot of truth to that, but again, I don't have the money to do this, I'm always using what I already have in stock. I would like to use some of those ribbed belts that uh, Palmer gave me. So, uh, also, I would like to have used a gearbox, and I at a flea market last summer, I ran across a gearbox on a roof riding mower, a very old one. I wanted to buy it, but I didn't have my trailer that day. But that type of gearbox, transmission, I'm going to call it a transmission, would be a very good option for you people to use. I won't carry it any farther than what I have because I've just spent a lot of time and a lot of videos on this. But let me get this mounted, and in about two hours I'll be back. Thank you to you viewers out there who give me information that's very usable. And I had talked about adjusting the pots in here, and I didn't know much about it, but someone gave me the links, and I printed out the manual for this. About a 10-page, 20-page manual, but one page deals with the, the pots, what they are, how to adjust them, and so on, but... That's something I'm going to do off camera. I'm not going to get back into that because that video really is completed. But uh, I'm glad to have that information so I know how to adjust this. All right, I'm finally back and it's four hours later. I just had a lot of fussing around and, and failures and things like that. But one of the first things I did was to finally remove this knuckle buster here up over the guard 
that's a piece of 3 8 threaded rod and a crank handle that I had but you can't really use the knob there you gotta, you gotta do this but at least it's better than what was on there and I know there are quick release mechanisms and all of that but uh, well that's good enough for now I'll tell you right now this whole setup with the VFD is a failure I'm shocked I started out by putting this original four inch pulley that came with the saw on there and it ran way 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 too fast just outrageously fast so then I put the 14 inch pulley on and it's better but then I had to reduce the size of the pulley on the motor so you can see there was a lot of fussing around changing belts and the belt is not slipping but now I'll turn the saw around and show you the failures from the front side Here's the three-phase motor, one horsepower, and it's just clamped on there. It's temporary because, believe me, this is not a permanent setup because of the failure. I do have the VFD right here. Now, that would be a bad place for it because the, the dust is coming right off of this and would get into there. So, that it would have to be covered or in a remote location, but that is not suitable at all, even though that's the most convenient spot. Now I just changed blades, put on a fresh sharp blade from uh, KBC and it's a, a Sterrett blade that is, it's a rather fine tooth, 18 tooth regular set and half inch wide because I had been running 3 eighths wide. So got a nice blade on there and now I'm going to show you what happens. In order to get the blade speed slow enough, around 100 or 120, I have to have this down to uh, about 7. And it will still overload at that slow speed. Now the machine is running, it's very, very quiet at that slow speed. I don't know if you can see the pulley turning back there, but you probably won't hardly see. Yeah, you can see the blade moving. Now I'm going to start by taking a speed measurement here. I won't even tell you what the RPM of the pulley is. But right now it's about 125 feet per minute, just a little faster than what I wanted. And this is, well, that's a quarter inch cold roll steel and it is cutting all right a little bit slow going because it's a fine blade and I didn't want to use any lubricants on there because uh, some of you were, are worried about the steel chips getting embedded into the rubber tires and all of that if you're going to use this as a multi-purpose uh, tool. But when I turn the VFD just a little bit lower, to about there, that gives me about 100 feet per minute. And I'm going to saw, let's see if it trips. It doesn't stall. No, it's working all right. A little earlier, before I started the camera, I was getting uh, an overload here. Whoops. The belt is not slipping, and I am not able to get it to stall. So there seems to be tremendous torque. One inch thick. Real slow cutting, but it's thick metal with a fine tooth blade. I was not able to stall it. And I'm surprised that the overload uh, didn't trip because when I was uh, declaring this a failure just a few minutes ago when I started this clip, 
it was because I had just gone through the overload here on the VFD but uh, now it's not doing that so it's camera shy I guess so that's what it's doing on steel it is usable let me try aluminum and I'll run it at a higher speed and I understand it's not the correct blade and I'm gonna zip it up here to about 22 on the VFD and see what it does it's cutting very fast I don't know if you can hear how loud that is it was just screaming and hurt my ears my ears are now ringing I don't know why that is uh, I experienced that in the other videos as well possibly the whole frame of the of the uh, saw is chattering a little bit I don't know of course there is no guard here but watch the pulley as I turn the speed up and then back down that's 50 cycles because I set that as the maximum which isn't even 100 percent of the motor speed and that's a 1725 motor that's about six frequency of six and you can see how slowly that is moving and the motor is warm but it is not hot but I do understand that the motor probably would overheat because the fan the cooling fan on the motor is running way too slow to cool the motor properly and I think everybody understands that but the bandsaw in my shop is always used intermittently, not very short periods of time, so it would never get overheated. Very dangerous without guards. I am declaring this entire experiment, really this entire series, as pretty much of a failure. That you just can't convert without a gearbox. And you can see that uh, the commercial companies always used a gearbox in their uh, various versions. I probably shouldn't even go ahead with that Powermatic I, I was going to do. But I've already kind of committed to it and, and agreed to taking it. Several of you in the comments have said, well, I just simply use my porta band on a little vertical stand. And that's quite a good solution, too. You can't do any contour cutting with it. Also, some of you put your small chinesium horizontal bandsaws into the vertical position and have had at least mixed results with that. In a, a future video, I have it on order now, I have one of the real small battery operated porta bands and I'll run through some uh, experiments with that as well. But again, this was strictly experiment and I am going to strip this whole setup down and put all of the original equipment back on that is a wood cutting saw because remember I do have my boys crane that I use for metal cutting that and I would love to get a dual but they're too big and too heavy but they are the ultimate solution well I hope you enjoyed this video and the other ones in the series and watch for a few more that are still coming this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now